Not everybody, I suppose, is familiar with what it takes to keep an unlimited hydroplane running. But you don't blow it out of your backyard garage. <laughs> it does take a fairly substantial facility to house a team, including not only just the boat itself and the trucks and the trailers. And gosh, we have 30 Rolls-Royce Merlin engines here. But it takes a lot of people. And of course, we too have a lot of mementos in our shop. We have one from, I think, our 1977 victory in Madison, Indiana, a flying. And of course, you in Seattle, most everybody will remember our world championship effort last year where on King we got a tremendous shot of this whole wing disintegrating and we had to run the final heat without the, without the wing. And let me tell you something, our boat is aerodynamically extremely pure and it's difficult to run successfully without that particular wing. But everybody glued it together, I think including guys from King helped us and they glued it together in a victory and we were able to win the 1980 World Championship event. Of course, the, the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine is a, I guess you'd say, a, an infamous engine because it gained its fame uh, during the, in the Second World War. You remember that. It was in all the Seattle papers. That's the one we won. Uh, this particular engine gained its fame installed in the British Spitfire during the Battle of Britain in the Second World War. And they're an incredible engine. They may now, however, with the advent of the Budweiser engine, the Rolls-Royce Griffin, that's a different engine with 600 more cubic inches and their pistons, which you can see probably coming apart here, uh, are considerably bigger with ours than ours to allow those additional cubic inches. And of course, with the 600 cubic inches more, this is about 1,640 cubic inches. They're coming in at about a little over 2,200 cubic inches. They're able to develop about 1,000, at least 1,000 more horsepower than anybody in the history of the sport. So it's incredible to me that these engines designed for an airplane, they were probably designed in the 30s, late 30s, to do battle in the 40s, should come into the 50s, 60s, and 70s and perform at the level they've been performing. Of course, this is our engine room, and really this is probably one of the fanciest shops that I think that I've ever been associated with it because it's allowed us to separate a lot of the functions of a of a team that has to have everything perfect when, as I mentioned, we travel throughout the United States and try to be totally self-contained. This is our machine room and uh, though it may, the whole area may be seemingly at least a little unproductive at this moment, we do have, as I mentioned, I think a little earlier, four men on the Atlas Van Lines team all year round, two part-time, and uh, this place just jumps. And in the summer, an unlimited hydroplane team demands about an eight-day commitment each week. In our particular shop, I think we've probably got enough equipment to build close to 25 or 30 Rolls-Royce Merlin engines. So it takes a complete team and a tremendous organization, and as you can see, a, really an unusual, I think now, a physical facility just to sustain everything we're doing to run just 10 events throughout the nation. I'm inclined to think that if unlimited hydroplane racing ever expanded its you know, it's scheduled so that we ended up with 15 unlimited hydroplane races around the nation or 20 or, and we decided we, as a case in point, say we decided we want to run sanctions some events in the, in the southern part of our nation uh, in the wintertime, we'd have to have more equipment than we, when we, than we have here. But to sustain our team for 10 races throughout the year, this is exactly what you, well, it's just exactly what you got to have to, to come up with, with Thunderboats. Of course, this is our forklift, which we absolutely have to have to reach all this equipment that we're store we have in storage. Ours is one of the fastest forklifts in town. I think it can blow the Budweiser's doors off. Of course, they got a little extra horsepower with theirs. This is our headwork area and our supercharger room. This is Jim Harvey, who delightfully came over from the Circus Circus team having been crew chief to join us. Uh, the superchargers are extremely critical in nature and very delicate. And you gotta be very careful with them, but you gotta make them work too because they're nothing but a big fan that's designed to blow more fuel air and air into the combustion chamber, do more work, and produce more, har more I was gonna say more Harvey, but really more, more horsepower. We try to do some of that too. <laughs> of course, we've talked on King many times about Mendoza's mementos that have died and <laughs> committed suicide. I'd hate to tell you, but there's about $60,000 worth of propellers sitting in this tin garbage can. 
it really makes me want to throw up. <laughs> now, these are propellers that we would very much like to sell somebody else because the only use we have in the Atlas Van Lines racing team is super anchors or to throw it, folks.